Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're installing the Stealth Hitch on a BMW X5. So here we have our hitch installed and as you can see or not see, the Stealth Hitch lives up to its name. And the way it does that is it's actually located under here. And when you wanna hook up your accessories, you simply can take your receiver tube or your ball mount if you have the towing package and it's simply gonna clip into place. It's gonna be nice and secure and you can lock it as well. So if you just bought the receiver rack, you're gonna be getting this receiver tube. And this is a nice two inch by two inch, so it's gonna be great for all your accessories, whether it be cargo carriers or bike racks, anything along those lines. And these are gonna install super easy here just by putting this up. Now, if you have the towing package, you're gonna get this as well as the ball mount. So that's gonna be nice for when you need to hook up to those trailers. You can simply swap this one out at the turn of the handle, put this one in place, and you're ready to go. Now when you are ready to tow, you just simply swap out to your ball mount, push this up, hear that nice click, and it's gonna be nice and solid. You can go ahead and lock it if you would like to. And that's gonna be easy to lock with our lock here on the side. Now you're also gonna see with the towing package, this is our safety chain loops. And you're gonna have one on each side and that way you can actually hook up to your trailer. Another thing that's going to be different on the towing package, which is really nice, is gonna be our seven pole here. That way you can hook up to your trailer. Well, what happens if you have a four pole trailer? No problem. You also get this nice adapter. And so you're able to just throw this in, close it up, and now you have a four pole. Now with your accessory receiver in place, you're gonna have a tongue weight of 600 pounds and that's gonna be a decent amount of weight. And what that is, is the weight pushing down on the inside of the receiver tube opening. So imagine a cargo carrier loaded up, that suspended weight on here is gonna be that tongue weight. So 600 is really gonna open it up to what accessories you can load up on this. Now also you're gonna see a 5 8 hitch pin hole. Now this doesn't come with a hitch pin and clip and a lot of times with your accessories when you purchase them, they'll come with it. But if they don't, you can actually pick a few different styles up here at eTrailer and we even have locking ones available. So that way when you load your accessories in, you can actually lock them here. No one's gonna walk away with them. Now as far as some important measurements on here, we're gonna have a ground clearance of right at one foot. So really, you shouldn't have too many issues making contact with anything with the receiver itself, but when you have your accessories loaded up, sometimes they can extend out. So when you go up an incline, those can actually bottom out. So just keep that in mind when going on inclines or any rough terrain. Now with your ball mount on, you're actually gonna get a slightly higher tongue weight at 800 pounds, and that's gonna be kind of that trailer weighing down on this fulcrum. Now, it has a gross trailer weight rating of 8,000 pounds, and that's quite a bit. Uh, but it, you should definitely check your vehicle's owner's manual to see what the vehicle is actually capable of towing uh, to make sure that it's not uh, underneath that 800 or 8,000 pound threshold. That way you're not towing too much. And to find out that weight, that's really just gonna be your trailer plus the accessories loaded up. So something to keep in mind before hooking up and towing. Now, something that's nice here is you have a slight raise on your shank, so you're actually gonna gain a little bit of ground clearance here. Now, as far as from the bottom, we're actually at 13 inches there, so really you shouldn't have any more issue than the other one, um, and generally your trailer is not gonna be hanging down low like an accessory, so you shouldn't have to worry too much overall with your ground clearance. Now, if you're worried about trailer making contact with your rear fascia, this is actually a pretty good clearance here uh, from the furthest point of the rear fascia to the center of the balls right at six inches. So you shouldn't have any issues here with it making contact with your vehicle. Now we have this carabiner style uh, safety chain in our loop here. Now it, no problems here with it having any clearance. A normal style hook shouldn't have a problem. Your larger clevis style might be a little bit hard to get in here, but overall you should be able to hook it onto these fairly easy. Now that we've gone over some of the features and kind of what it looks like or doesn't look like, uh, we're gonna go through the installation step by step. Now this is a little bit more intricate than a typical hitch install, and that's because it does live behind the rear fascia. BMWs inherently are a little bit more tricky to work on, but step by step, if you follow me, we can get through this and get your hitch installed. To begin our installation, we're gonna start by opening up our hatch. We'll fold down our tailgate as well. 
So make sure that you have all your contents cleared out, including your all weather floor mats that you may have back in the hatch. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna be removing these interior panels here. This one's gonna be pretty easy as you just push this down and this actually comes out. Um, this one on this side, you may have to kind of get something here to pry on it uh, as there is no handle. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab just a trim panel removal tool that has a little angle to get this pried out. So just kind of working it in up top. We're gonna try to find a nice little gap where it goes through. You may try the side as well. Just trying to find it, there we go. On the side there, that gives me a little bit more and this should simply come out as well. Now let's set all this aside. So next we're gonna fold down our rear seats and this we need to gain access to our clips here. So once we actually have the seats folded down, these are gonna be able to pry up pretty easily just by using your finger and that's gonna reveal a T30 bolt. So go ahead and get your T30 Torx bit and we'll take this out. Now during this whole installation, I highly recommend having a nice place to organize all the hardware that comes out. That way you have it when it's time to reinstall. Now you may need to lift this up a little bit and you're gonna see that drops out and the bolt is in a little bracket. So just make sure you get your hands on that and you should be able to get that out pretty easy. Now you can also go ahead and do the other side. So now once you get those Torx bits out, you're gonna see that this actually has a latch here, so it's gonna raise it up in place. Now we are gonna have to get this strut off, and so there's gonna be a little clip here, and it's just like a retainer clip to hold this on. So get a small flat head. You're gonna to wanna to try to pry that clip open. You may need to work on it from different angles here, so there's kind of an indention. I'm wondering if I can't get under there. Oop, almost there. There we go. So make sure that clip doesn't actually come off of it, but you want that just popped off there and that should actually relieve that pressure on the strut, allowing it to come off pretty easy. So now we're gonna see, we have some plastic rivets. We're gonna go ahead and get those popped up. There's gonna be seven total. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So go ahead and remove those. And to get these out, you're gonna see there's those little grooves. I'm just using a small flat head and you can go ahead and just kind of slide it in there. Just a little twist should work that up. And a lot of times you can use your fingers to get the rest of it out. A trim panel removal tool is also helpful um, as they can kind of pry these up and kind of save your fingers while doing this. With those plastic push pins taken out, we can remove this and that's gonna expose where our battery is. Next, we're gonna get our threshold taken out and that's gonna be accomplished by taking a T20 Torx bit. You're gonna see there's four screws here, so we'll go ahead and remove those. So now we can go ahead and remove that threshold. So you just kind of work it here a little bit. It's gonna slide out just about like this. So you kind of work it back and forth a little bit, slide forward. It's kind of caught on the carpet a little bit, but that's the only tension I have there. So just kind of get one side loose and it should come out. So we're gonna be gaining access to our passenger taillight and you're gonna see in this little slot here, there's gonna be a plastic cap and there is a slot there to where you can actually pry that cap open and it might pop out like that. So just make sure you grab that. And then you're gonna have a, it looks to be an eight millimeter. So get your eight millimeter socket and we'll get that removed. Next, we're gonna take off our latch cover here, and I'm just using a plastic trim removal tool. Uh, these are great to have, especially for things like this, so you're not marring up your plastic, and you can kind of get underneath these corners. So if you wanna pick up a pair or a set of these, we actually have these here at eTrailer, and they are really nice for future automotive projects. And that should come out like that. So you do have these clips, so just kind of pry away, and that should come off. Now, on our passenger side here, where our seat kind of folds into, you're gonna see this little button, and we're gonna just pry this off using our trim panel removal tool, and that's gonna gain us access 
to a 10 millimeter bolt here. Now be careful, we don't want this dropping in, so just, you can go ahead and remove it, but try not to drop it. So we're gonna go ahead and remove our cargo cover now. We're gonna push our button here, and that should pop it out. Set this aside. Now this corner portion of our seat here, we're gonna pull this forward, and that should just pop out as there's a large clip right there. And that's gonna gain us access to a few more of our hardware bolts. So let's take a look and see what we need to remove. So now we're gonna see we have a plastic push pin right there. So we're gonna go ahead and get that removed. On this interior panel, you're gonna have two plastic push pins right in that little corner and right here. So we can go ahead and get those removed as well. So now we're gonna be removing this panel. And the best way I've found is if you reach up top here, right above where the seat latch actually is, you can kind of just pry this back and it should peel. Now, there are gonna be some electrical connections on this, so before you just kind of pull this out, you're gonna wanna make sure that we actually unclip those. So let me get a better angle and we'll see what's actually attached. Now, to get this side panel off, you're gonna see our latch is kind of actually in the panel itself, so we're gonna to have to kind of loop this around it to get this to actually drop out. So peeling this back, I'm gonna to try to get this portion at least outside of the weather stripping as that's kind of holding it in, but also you have this plastic down here. So we're gonna to try to pry and work it out and see how well that goes. Little tip, just kind of moving this plastic, that's a separate piece, but this larger portion, just kind of to get that lip out of the way there, it's gonna allow us to kind of work this a little bit more, and now we can work on this edge to get this portion out. We also have the latch that's around up there, so also you're gonna kind of wanna get that separated, but with a little bit of wiggling here, we can actually see that it's off, now I see we have our 12 volt outlet here. It's just a little cigarette lighter. So let's go ahead and pull this red clip back. Sometimes they can be tricky. You can use a small flat head to gain access. I'm gonna use my trim panel here. Just kind of push that back. And that's gonna make it to where it's not locked. And then push that tab and that should separate. We then see that we have our little LED lamp here. We're gonna go ahead and get that removed as well. And our tab, let's see, we might be able to get the whole light. That might be a better option. Um, there we go, so just kind of pushing that forward. I'm wondering if I can't feed that through. There we go. Now we can set our panel aside. So now we're going to need to remove a nut to gain access to removing our taillight. There's gonna be another one as well, but our first one here to the left of this white bracket, you're gonna see this opening here in the sound deadening, and that should be a 10 millimeter nut there, so go ahead and remove that. So on the driver's side, we'll be doing the same thing as far as the taillight nut. It's gonna be kind of tucked up here across from the other one. So kind of see where that other one is in reference and you can kind of see that there's gonna be some sound insulation and there are some slits actually on them from the factory. Uh, you can peel this back if you need to, but that's gonna gain you access to the 10 millimeter nut on this side. So we'll go ahead and remove that as well. So I'm using my 10 millimeter with a swivel to kind of get there. Um, a ratchet with a, a deep well socket is probably going to be a good option as well. And just make sure you hold on to that and then set that aside. And we're going to need to take off this trim here on our tail light and I'm just going to peel up from the bottom and that should pop out like that. 
So now we're going to see that we have two T30s and we also have an eight millimeter uh, screw down here. So let's go ahead and we'll get those removed. So now we're going to just pull this out slightly and that's going to allow that portion of the taillight to come out and we're going to kind of work the taillight out slowly just kind of to get those plugs to separate here. So pull on it gently as we do actually still have our uh, taillight plugged in so we don't want to damage that plug. So this is where that trim panel tool really comes into play here. I can kind of put this against it and know that it's not going to scratch that paint. Let's see if we can't work it this way. There we go. So now to get this out, you can see this is our stud where that nut was and it is kind of pressed in there. So you're gonna to want to kind of take a look here at the way that this is facing and we're gonna to try to pull straight out to get this out. Now be careful, you know, working on these edges of the taillights, they can chip at times. So just take your time, um, but at least you'll know the angle that you'll need to pull it out. And then right here we have our taillight as we're actually going to unplug it. So underneath here, there's gonna be a red locking clip. We should be able to push this tab and get this out. Just like that. So now we're just gonna repeat the same process on this tail light. So pulling that off, getting the hardware out, and then getting this lodged out and unplugged, and then we'll move along. So now we're going to need to get our fender trim here peeled back a little bit, and there's gonna be an eight millimeter bolt, but in order to get to it, we do have to pry some of the clips off. So take your time, again, um, these can break pretty easily. So using my trim removal tool, I'm gonna to try to pry it open here and that might gain us a little bit of pressure to be able to work this up. It does have a tab that goes into the bottom portion so getting that out is going to be helpful. So getting your hands kind of on the back side here to allow it to kind of pop is going to help. Um, you can see this is kind of how that tab actually works. So it, if you can you might be able to get a flat uh, plastic piece in here to kind of help but I'm doing okay using just my hands and putting pressure exactly where that clip is so that should work without having to use a tool there. There we go. And so now as you can see I pried it back this far. Now don't pull this back too much because if you crease this it's very possible it's going to leave a permanent mark on there. So what we've looked for is this little eight millimeter and now that we have access to it I'm going to go ahead and remove that. Now's a good time, um, especially before, if you do wanna to try to pry here, for a little added protection, I'm just gonna be using painter's tape and I'm gonna run it along the edge of our fascia here uh, and also along our rear quarter panel. And this is just gonna give just a little added protection uh, when we put our fascia back on, as well as taking it off. It's not gonna put paint to paint and cause any chips or scratching, or at least it's gonna give you a fighting chance to prevent some of that. I'm also gonna do it here and that way our plastic from our fender covers here aren't going to scratch that as well. Now once you have this side taped up, we're going to go ahead and repeat the same process. So removing this and getting that eight millimeter bolt on the other side. So now we're going to need to pop our, our reflectors here to gain access to a bolt that's behind there. Now these can be very tricky and they can break pretty, pretty easily. So this trim panel removal tools are going to be really helpful and really just running this wedge back here and you're going to want to just be gentle and you should have, be able to pop that out. Um, this side actually kind of pivots a little bit but there's also a tab that's in there. So just kind of work it over slowly, try to get that popped out. And then you're gonna see, this is kind of what it looks like. This one's gonna give you a little trouble here. So really just working this one out first, and then you'll have this clip here. So get both of them removed on both sides of the car. So with our eight millimeter socket, we'll go ahead and remove both of these. Now with the vehicle raised up, this is gonna help show you guys the 14 screws that you're gonna be taking out on the bottom side. And really you're just gonna be kind of running along here 
These side ones, we, we're not gonna remove those quite yet. Um, so these are gonna be 10 millimeters. There's also uh, some eight millimeters that are kind of thrown in here as well. Uh, it looks to be just the outside ones are the eight, but go ahead and you can start removing these. And there's also one kind of tucked in this little pocket as well. So make sure you get that one. Once you have all your 10 millimeter ones out, this panel's gonna come off and we can set this aside. So now we'll get our two outside eight millimeters. So now using a 10 millimeter socket, we're gonna go ahead, there should be six uh, additional screws here on each side. So we'll be taking this corner panel off so you can go ahead and remove those. And this panel does have a little tab on the back, so just slide that out there and it should come out. So now we're gonna begin taking off the rear fascia. So at this point, you could probably go grab a friend and let them know that you're gonna need them soon. But before doing that, we're gonna simply work on each side, getting these clips pried up. Now, be careful here. You don't wanna pull this back too far, but grab the fascia on the back side here and you're gonna kinda of just work your way down nice and slow. Now, sometimes these can get caught up in those clips pretty well, and you can use a plastic trim removal tool to kind of push down on those tabs. Ideally though, if you can use your hands and just put gentle pressure and just kind of work on each clip individually, we'll get this undone. Now, this top portion here, you're gonna see this is kind of latched into there. So let's see if we can't get that separated. And you're gonna see that little tab right there. I'm gonna use a flathead and just kind of pry that down to separate that. So the flathead or the plastic trim and removal tool, again, is gonna be beneficial here. So let's try to push down on that clip in the center. And that way we can, there we go, just like that, separate it. And it looks like we're gonna to need to continue to do that on these other ones as well. So go ahead and do that as well. Now we're gonna to go to the center of our fascia here. And I have our little tailgate just kind of set in an angle to give me enough working room. And you're gonna see there's a tab here. And what I'm gonna do is use an Allen wrench to kind of get that angle to push it in. And at the same time, you're gonna to wanna to just slightly tug the fascia back so that it can move over that clip like that. And now you're gonna have four of these total. So go ahead and do that on the rest of them. So now with your extra set of hands, we're gonna be removing this fascia. Now, before we just kind of pull it out, there is gonna be a sensor that we're gonna to need to unplug. It's gonna be on our passenger side. So you really wanna just make sure that there's nothing else hanging up as we pull this back and also have a place set up to actually put the fascia. That way it doesn't tip over and get scratched in the process. So now on the bottom side here, it's gonna get kind of tricky. You're gonna to want to push up on here as that's gonna kind of separate. This is actually into a metal bracket here. So just pushing this up to separate should allow this to pop out. Just like that. There we go. Okay. So over here, this is the sensor I was talking about. There's just gonna be this little pin here on the other side so just push those in we should be able to get this to separate now this plug is kind of tricky to get it actually separated to make it a little bit easier you can use a trim panel tool and actually pop this out from there it's going to allow you to work on this plug a little bit easier so pushing down you'll see there's a tab there as well as one on the other side so just push that and the plug should separate with a little bit of tugging here there we go so now we can set our fascia aside. So now we're gonna be lowering down our muffler and we're gonna accomplish that by using a 13 millimeter socket to lower this down. There's gonna be one on each side. And while we're here, you're gonna see on this actual impact bar support, we have just this plastic push in here for our wire. And this will be coming off. So we're gonna go ahead and pop this out and that's not gonna, that's gonna allow us to not have pressure on this as we pull it down. And that should come out. So now I'm gonna grab my 13 millimeter and lower our, down, our muffler down. 
So we're gonna be removing our impact bar in a later step. So to help that, we're gonna remove this little guy. It's plugged in to the actual reinforcement beam. So using our trim panel tool, just pop that down. Next step we're gonna do is go to these nuts right here on our muffler. And we're just gonna use a 13 millimeter to remove those on each side. And that's gonna allow us to lower our muffler down. Now these little tabs should pop down. Um, if they're stuck, they should just kind of give them a wiggle and that'll drop this down. And our exhaust actually rests on this little beam here. So that should hold it there nicely. Now to gain access to the bolts for our impact bar, we're gonna to need to take this little portion off as well as the one on the other side. And that's gonna be accomplished. We have two plastic push pins. We also have these little locking tabs here. So we'll go ahead and get the push pins out first. You may have to move your tailgate a bit to get a little more access to it. And then these tabs are pretty simple. You can probably get these on the bottom side here. Um, I'm just pushing these kind of towards, it's a tight fit here, but you can kind of just push the tab back. Uh, you could probably do it from the top as well, just using kind of your flat head or your trim tool. You can wedge that in there. Align that clip to push back and unlatch. So with a little bit of force, we were able to get that out. And you can see there's actually a back clip too. So it's kind of tricky. Um, you just kind of pry this up and it should work its way out. Now we're going to go ahead and repeat that same process on the other side. So now we need to remove our kick sensor panel here. And that's just going to be, we have five plastic push pins. So go ahead and remove those. Now we have our last wire here, and this is what we actually undid from the bumper support. And I'm actually gonna unclip this, and that way we can get this moved out of the way without causing any damage. So we have our clip right here. We should be able to just push this tab and get this separated. There we go. Now this is gonna kind of be out of the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna find a spot that I can kind of zip tie this up. That way it's not going to be hanging by this, but it's open this whole area up for us to work. So now we're gonna be taking down our impact bar here and you're gonna see these are 18 millimeter nuts. There's gonna be a total of four of them on each side. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those. Now we are gonna to need to save this hardware as we're gonna be reusing it. As far as the bumper beam goes though, we can actually set that aside as we won't be reinstalling it. So we can do whatever you want with it once we take this off. Now we finally get to get our hitch put on and just slide these over the studs. Now I'm gonna put just two of our factory nuts that we took off on the top side of the hitch, two on each side, and that can hold that in place. And we're gonna need to attach our brackets that actually came with the hitch, um, but we're gonna be using the studs and that nut that goes on it so just get the top on there that way it's going to hold in place for you so now we have our brackets and basically this is just going to replace to allow us to mount our exhaust hanger on it so to make sure that it's on the right side you can see this should line up here with that bracket you can go ahead and put this on and hand tighten this just make sure that it is facing this way with that bracket facing downward Now once you have them all hand threaded on, you can go ahead and tighten them down. Now we're gonna be using a torque wrench to get proper specs on them. So you don't have to get super tight cranking them down. Uh, and also as we tighten this up, it'll cinch against the vehicle, but we're gonna to wanna to make sure this is centered up as possible. These are elongated. So there's a little bit of uh, adjustability as far as side to side. You just wanna make sure that this is lined up properly with the middle of the vehicle. So I'm gonna go ahead and start tightening these down a little bit.
So now we have it centered up. I've gone ahead, tightened it down a little bit. I'm going to go back with our torque wrench here, um, and we're going to be torquing it to the manufacturer's recommendations in the instruction manual. Now, if you don't have a torque wrench, we actually have these here at eTrailer, and this is going to be an important step to make sure that those studs aren't going to have too much stress on them, but also they're not going to get loose over time. So go ahead and do this to all of those eight bolts, uh, nuts that we just put on. So now we can reinstall our little plastic pieces that we took off earlier. So those should just clip in and we'll put our plastic pushpins back in. So now we're going to actually attach our hard, or exhaust bracket to our bracket that we've attached to the hitch. And we're going to be using the supplied hardware that came in the kit. So we have the bolt a flat washer and then up top we're going to have this flange nut so you'll see we do have the one pin that kind of goes up in that little hole up front so let's try to get that aligned now you're, you might have the weight of the exhaust kind of fighting against you so once you get one side it's definitely going to be a little bit easier so with that up feed this guy through Now I'll take my flange nut and get a few threads started. Now we can go ahead and do the same on the other side. Now you can go ahead and tighten this down with the 13 millimeter. This flange nut should bite into the paint a little bit or the powder coating, so it shouldn't spin, but just for the start, you can kind of keep your thumb there and then it should tighten up fine. Now at this point, we're gonna be ready to put our receiver block in place. Now, if you are using the towing package, there's gonna be a few extra steps, but if you're just doing the receiver rack, this is going to simply bolt into place. We're gonna just run our bolts through here with the nuts. It's gonna be a 15 16 and you're gonna to wanna to tighten those down. Now, if you are doing the tow package, you're gonna to want to grab the included hardware here, and this is gonna slide over, you can actually set that through and you'll see we have our safety chain loops here so we're going to put one on this side and i'm going to just start working one of my bolts and just kind of hold it all in together it's a little bit of a handful here but once we get this fed through it should hold it there we go and now on the other side, we are going to have a safety chain loop as well, but we also have this Z bracket, and this is gonna allow us to mount up our electrical connection. So we can follow it up by feeding it through safety chain loop, and then our Z bracket. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and put our lock nut just on for now, just a couple threads. And that's just gonna hold that all in place as I run the other bolt through. Now go back with your 15 16 socket and wrench. You're gonna need one on both sides and get these tightened down. So now we're gonna go back with our torque wrench and using the manufacturer's recommendations, we're gonna to torque these down to spec. You are gonna need your wrench on the other side still just to hold that in place as you torque it down. go so now at this portion our hitch is actually installed now something I'm gonna point out real quick is we have this rubber plug your keys are actually located in there so you probably want to pull those out now set them in a safe location but the rest of it is going to be just putting everything back in place and if you are doing the tow package there's gonna be a little bit more wiring involved and we're gonna continue on with that but if you just have the rack receiver without the towing kit, you're ready to reinstall everything in reverse order that we took it off. And then meet us, meet up with us a little bit later in the video and I'll show you how to trim out your fascia to get this to be able to accept the hitches. So for our wiring, we have our module here and we have quite a bit of power wires running, well, electrical wires in general running kind of everywhere, but it's pretty simple. It's split down the middle here. We have our output and input side. This is actually going to feed outside the vehicle via a grommet. So what we're gonna do is grab our drill bit, which I'm using a 3 8 drill bit, 
and underneath here there's going to be a grommet and you'll see there's two dimples on the grommet now this is very careful be very careful with this we're going to be drilling on this dimple here that should route us through and that's going to put us to the inside of the vehicle now this is wiring going in there so just try your best to stay away from this and then once we have that hole drilled we'll be able to pass through our black sheathed wires so i'm going to go ahead and drill through here definitely make sure you don't make contact with any of the wires while drilling so now we're going to be feeding this actual sheath section through and it's going to be a little bit tricky now once you get to this portion here you have the blue and purple this can live inside the vehicle this is going to be set up if you plan on using a brake controller you can tie into this or you actually have your reverse if you are you know backing up a boat or something along those lines so this is going to live inside this whole portion needs to pass through. Now it's kind of tricky to see that hole. So what I've actually done is I'm using airline tube and this is just gonna be a fish wire. And that way I can actually pull from the outside to get that through there. So to make this a little bit easier, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tape all these on there, but I'm gonna kind of taper that edge to make it as thin as possible to kind of pass through that hole. I'm also gonna run a little bit of tape here on that sheathing just so it doesn't bind up on that as we're pulling through. So. If you don't have an airline tube, you can really use, you know, extra wire, anything that's kind of flexible that you can pass through there. And it really should help make passing this all the way through a lot easier. So I'm gonna work my way down here to the sheathing and then we'll just get this pulled through. So now I'm able to just kind of pull this and I got my hand on the backside, just kind of feeding these wires through. It's a pretty stiff grommet. So I'm pinching the sheathing where I've taped it just to kind of get that to feed through. You might be able to enlarge the hole a little bit with the larger drill bit as well, but be careful with that. I think we're just about through. Now once I've pulled this sleeved portion through our grommet, I've simply just routed it along the hitch here, putting a few zip ties just to kind of keep it in place and out of the way of anything for when we put the fascia back on. And then now we have it over here. Now this is going to attach to our bracket. But let's go ahead, we'll get this all hooked up. I'm gonna show you how to do that. First, you're gonna to wanna to grab your plug here and you're gonna want a Phillips head screwdriver. So you're gonna remove these two screws and hold on to them because you'll need them. There's also gonna be a Phillips head up top and that just kind of holds this sleeve in which is gonna crimp down on our wires. You can actually loosen that up a little bit if you need to, as we're gonna be sliding this up, but it should have enough room to pass those through. Now already I can hear that our plug has gotten loose. So just looking at it real quick, this, those screws hold this in place. And there's really only one way this can slide in as there's a notch down here and you have a notch that goes all the way past through here. So that's gonna be important for denoting uh, the orientation of how we're gonna run our wires. So keep that in mind. Now, what we can do here is take this section and we're gonna slide this up, passing our wires through. And this sleeving is a little bit stiff, so you may have to kind of give it a little pressure here as you go along. And you should have enough here to where we can at least attach our wires. Now, we are going to be splicing all of these ends off. So go ahead and get your strippers here. And we're just gonna go ahead and make, I'd say about, about that long. Splice those off and go ahead and do that for all the wires. So now looking at our wires, they all have individual functions and our instruction manual is gonna show us kind of how to route these, but just kind of give you an understanding of what each of them do. First, we'll start at our white. This is gonna be our ground wire. Our yellow, that's gonna be our left turn signal. Our brown's gonna be our running lights or tail lights. We then have our black wire and this is gonna be our auxiliary, so our 12 volt power. And then we have our right turn signal, which is gonna be green. And then if you're running a brake controller, you would use blue. And then finally, you have your backup. So this is if you have a trailer and with a boat and you're backing it up, 
this purple will actually do the override on that. So we're gonna go ahead, I'll get these all hooked up. Just follow your instruction manual and it should show you the proper way to get these installed. Now, to do that, it's pretty easy with your Phillips head screwdriver. You're just gonna kind of loosen these up. Now don't take these out all the way because then you may be hunting for the screw, but you're gonna see it's gonna open this plate up a bit. And what you're gonna want to do is create a little bit of a hook. And what I kind of use is my screwdriver and that's gonna give me kind of this fish hook kind of style. And that's gonna allow you to kind of work that in. And you want it kind of underneath the screw, but in between the plates. So you may have to kind of fish this through, but it should just kind of hook in. And then once that's in that plate, nice and clean, you can go ahead and tighten that down. So go ahead and get all of these wires attached. So take your time getting them all installed properly. And this is what it should look like when it's done. Now, finding my slot that goes all the way through, this is gonna go on the bottom portion of our plug here. So we're gonna just kinda of pull this back end nice and slow. You don't wanna to put too much pressure on these wires. And I'm gonna just feed this in. And it should kinda of slot in there. You can see right there, it's actually sitting nice and flush against that inner ring. So when we tighten down our screws here on the side, you'll see these actually feed in and that's what holds the plug into place. Get this one in. So now you can see that screw in there. So now it that locks it in. So go ahead and you can do the other one as well. Now, if you've run into the same issue I have, and, and that is being the wire exposed here, you actually want this sleeving to kind of sit in there, but not a huge deal. We're gonna tighten this grub screw down, and this is just gonna kind of cinch this up. We're not gonna get too crazy here. It's just gonna make sure these wires don't really pull out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some electrical tape, and I'm gonna wrap this around, and that's gonna create a nice seal on this. Just wrap it nice and tight. I'm gonna just go over it few times just to make sure that we have a nice watertight seal around our electrical connections. So now we're going to grab our bracket here as this is how it's actually going to mount to our seven way and you'll see this nice little slit here that's going to be so we can slide this on but let's get our bracket installed here and you're going to see we have a Phillips head screw and then we have are not here so we'll just kind of go ahead get this one on and then our next one and it is slotted so it's going to be kind of adjustable and i think the reason why is once we get this on we're going to see where that wire actually shoots up so you don't have to really get too tight on here as we'll make some final adjustments afterwards but as far as the plug here we can mount this up and get it nice and snug. So we'll just feed this up. I think our best option is gonna be having it facing this way. Um, that way it's gonna be nice and easy to hook our plug up there. So we'll just feed our bolt through and follow it up with the nut. And we'll go through and do that with the rest of them as well. So I've gone ahead and tightened these up. And these little nuts are nice, they kind of bite into here, so you should be able to just tighten it down with your Phillips head screwdriver. Now, this slot part on our bracket, like I said, this is gonna allow us to move this around to where the wire's not binding. Something else I've noticed is there's a heat shield here. And so to plug in, I'm gonna actually make it a little bit easier for our customer here. And I think putting this at a slight angle is gonna be kind of nice for them to be able to get that plug in without making contact with any of your heat shield. So I'm gonna put it kind of at this slight angle. It's up to you, really what works best for you. So go ahead and get this tightened down. Now, the inside portion of our wiring, I'm gonna kind of give you a quick rundown of what I've done. So I mentioned earlier, our blue and purple wire we're going to just leave this kind of bundled up we have our module down there and i've taken our we have our black and our white wire 
and we also have our yellow wire that was in the spool. I've actually gone ahead and I've routed those over here. And what's going to happen is our yellow is going to be going to our tail light and our black is going to go to our positive. So we see our positive terminal, so I've actually routed our black here. Moving along, I ran our white through here. Our white's going to go to our ground here. And then our yellow is going to go over to the wiring on our passenger or our driver tail light here. Now on the other side on our passenger here, our red wire is not actually going to be used. So I've actually trimmed off the excess and just kind of taped that up. Uh, so that leaves us with our green and brown. So I'm going to be taking my green wire first and we have tons of excess here. And so I'm going to be quick splicing into our wiring, which is alongside here. Now, it is, it's got some plastic clips that hold it into the side and it's got this tape that's wrapped around it. So you can go ahead and pop that off with the trim panel tool and then peel back the tape so you can expose these wires as we're gonna need to quick splice them in. So first, let's get a little bit of slack on these and I'm gonna just cut off the excess. It's gonna make it a lot easier for us to get these attached. So pulling our green and brown wire up, again, I'm gonna give myself just a little bit of extra that way, and we're not stretching wires by any means, but we're also gonna be able to get the rest of this out of the way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut those, and we can move these. So now in the kit, it comes with quick splices, and quick splices are an interesting way to make a connection between two wires. Well, first we're gonna start with our green, and I'll show you how to do that. Our green wire is going to be matching up to the other green wire that has a blue stripe on it. So get that separated from the others. Again, just peeling that tape back should do it. And what we're going to be doing is on our quick splice, there's a section here where you can kind of clip the wires into them and that's going to hold it into place. And then we're going to snip this together, or clamp this together, and that's going to bite into the wires, sending the connection to both of them. So let's go ahead and attach these first. If you put a little bit of pressure where the wire is in that clip, that should kind of hold it in place. From here, we're going to put this cap side over, and it should kind of make a little clipping sound, and the wire should line up. You're going to see these little outputs. Just make sure that they're sitting properly in there. That way you're getting a good splice. So once you hear that little clip noise, and you know that they're lined up properly, you're going to go back with a pair of pliers here, and you're just going to kind of squeeze these down, and it should bite into it. Make sure it's evenly pressed throughout all. So do both sides if you need to. A set of channel locks might work a little bit better here, but as we can see, let's give it a quick little tug here, and that one's connected. So next, we're going to be taking our brown wire here, and that's going to be attaching to this purple guy here. So we'll go ahead with our quick splice and do the same thing. Now here on our driver's side, you can see that we spliced our yellow wire into our green wire with the blue stripe. So now we're going to go to our white wire, and this is going to go to this factory ground stud, and it's going to be nice and easy to attach. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just trim off a little bit here, just get rid of some of the excess, and you're going to want to grab the terminal that comes in the kit, as well as a 10 millimeter socket. So first thing, we'll strip this down and get our terminal on. Okay, make sure that connection's good. And then we're gonna take our 10 and just loosen this up. And you won't have to remove the whole thing um, because we should be able to just slide that on there. It's gonna be a little tricky here. Let's, there we are. So just move this up enough, and then you're gonna to wanna to slide this in. And there's actually a flat spot on this side, so if you can, try to get it in there. It's kind of a tricky spot here, but... All right, now once that's in place, you're gonna to wanna to kinda of hold that in so it doesn't back out as we tighten this, but you can go ahead and tighten your 10 millimeter back down. So now we're going to be attaching our black wire to our positive terminal and so you'll see with our 10 millimeter while we have it on hand, let's just go ahead and we're going to need to remove this because our ring terminal 
is not like the other terminal we use. You can't just slide it in. You actually have to put it on the stud. Set that here. And now we're gonna take our black wire. And again, I have quite a bit of excess, and that's okay. That's not a big deal, but I am gonna cut off just a little bit. And then in the kit, there's gonna be a fuse holder, and it has the fuse in place potentially from the factory. You're gonna to wanna to remove that. Make sure that your fuse is not in your fuse holder until we're actually hooked up to power. So you'll see it's got these crimped on butt connectors already and the ring terminal, so that's pretty nice. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier here. So we'll just simply run our black wire to this butt connector, crimp this down. Connection's good. So at this point, we're gonna need to put our ring terminal on that post and then take that 10 millimeter. We can go ahead and put that back on. And if we put it on this side, it's actually gonna be nice because this is still gonna be able to close down, so. Okay, that tightened down. This can go into place. And now we can actually put our fuse in our fuse holder. Go ahead and cap that up. So now we have all of our wiring essentially done, but we're gonna to want to actually test to make sure it's working before we get everything in place. And we're gonna be using a seven pole tester. We have these here at eTrailer. These are really nice because it, it'll keep it specific to the vehicle. Um, and you'll know if the wiring on the vehicle is bad. Now you can also hook up to your trailer and make sure that all your functions are working on the trailer. But if your trailer has wiring issues, sometimes it can give you a false positive. So we have this hooked up. We're gonna run through the light cycles and make sure it's all working. So first off, I'm gonna start with my running lights. Next, I'm gonna go to my left turn signal, my right turn signal, and then finally, my brakes. Now you're gonna see there is a light that's been on the entire time and that's actually the 12 volt power supply. So that's also a good sign that that is staying lit. Now one of our final steps, we need to actually trim this panel here as this is where we're gonna need to have it open to access our actual hitch and that way we can use our recently installed hitch. So pretty easy for this side, there's just these little notches here and those you can probably get with a knife or a utility knife, it should work fine. I'm gonna go ahead with the Dremel though and I'm gonna follow this. Now the rest of the portion does follow this little outline that I've made roughly and on the back side, there is some of this heat shield material. So just be careful as this, when you cut it, can actually be pretty sharp. So you might wanna take a file afterwards and go over it, um, but just be careful on this section. So now once you have it trimmed out, you're gonna to wanna to go back with either a file or I'm gonna be using just a grinding wheel here. And that way it's nice and smooth when we need to operate our hitch, we're not getting caught on any of these burrs that can be extremely sharp. So now with everything working properly, we can actually go ahead and start putting things back in the reverse order that we took them off. Now, there's a few things you're gonna to want to make sure you're doing, and that is gonna be getting all of our plugs back in place, starting with this, as well as our PDC when we put our fascia back on. So let's get this one plugged in real quick. The plug's kinda of tricky. It's gonna be a little bit hard to see, but should be able to get that clipped in just like that now normally this had the five push pins we're not going to have that anymore um, this is actually just going to be three of them so we can actually go ahead take our push pins here and put them in our holes And 
And now we can continue on with putting the rest of the car back together. So now we've got everything buttoned up, back together, looking like it was before. So let's close this up. And let's get our hitch ready for some accessories or towing. Now the great part about this hitch here is you're able to just hook this up pretty easily. I'm just gonna go ahead and unlock it real quick. With that open, that's gonna allow me to pop this in place. So if you're hooking up your accessories, whether it be a bike rack or a cargo carrier, this is gonna work great just by simply lifting this up. Quick twist of the handle here. Once that's in place, it's gonna be nice and solid. Now, if you bought the towing package, the ball mount's gonna go in the exact same way. Keep in mind that you're not going to be using this for towing, and you can actually see here on the accessory mount, it'll say not for towing. So if you have a ball mount, there's really no need to be using this for towing. This is just strong enough to hold your accessories. And that was a look and installation of a stealth hitch on a BMW X5.